Hi everyone, I'm David, welcome back to the channel. I've been away for a little while, getting into gardening of all things, but I'm back now, so let's do something with plants. So, first things first, we've got some preparation to do. Um, and this, I will be perfectly honest, is something that I should have probably shown you how to do quite a while ago. We are going to make some basic homemade flocking. You can't have plants without there being grass and, and things like that there. So this is just straight sawdust. And that's what we're going to use for the base of the flocking. Um, if it was a grass flocking that I was doing, then I would have run this through a sieve so that I got the finer grains. But what I want to make with this is that kind of dark, mulchy, um, twiggy sort of stuff that you find at the base of trees and under bushes and things like that, where it's all in shade and, and you don't get really greenery growing. Um, so, let's get straight on with that. First of all, we need some very watered down paint. We'll start off with some grey paint first, just to desaturate the pigments on the other colours. Next, a spot of black, because I want this to be nice and dark. And <clears throat> because the sawdust is quite a light colour, there is a very good chance that is, is going to show through all of the rest of the stuff and then let's get a nice big swig of brown in there give that a good mix through and then add quite a bit of water get it mixed all the way from the bottom and then just get our sawdust in there right so that's a nice sludgy mixture yeah that's probably around about the color that I want it give it a really good mix make sure that there's no lumpy bits and then that can be set aside to soak for a little while and then I'll pop it out onto a tray and let it dry off. Next we need some bases. Now I am going to be using these as a combination of scatter terrain and also a spell marker so I want some quite small bases. I could use normal figure bases but let's face it they are pretty expensive but at the cheapy store I found these poker chips. Um, plastic, round and yeah, cheap as chips. Oh God, that was a dad joke. Um, anyway, sorry. So this is what I'm going to be using. You can apply them direct to your models or make bases out of scrap cardboard or plastic or anything like that. But what you do need to do, because you're going to be gluing things to it, is rough the surface up. Now, because we're going to be using super glue to attach these, we do want to have something that's less of a flat surface so that they, the super glue can actually bind to it. So when I cut, I'm not going to be cutting straight down. I'm going to be cutting in at an angle so there's that slight underhang for the super glue to get under and actually hold on to it. So making sure that I mind my fingers, we're just going to score that like that I'll get on with the rest of these give them a quick undercoat and a spray coat of brown and I'll see you in the next part so while the bases are off and drying <laughs> we need some plants to put on them I have a selection here of loads of stuff that I've been picking up basically over the past year um, these ones are 
from um, army man type sets uh, you always get a, a little bit of sort of scenery buildings and, and um, plants that plug into them so I have got those um, these ferns by themselves are certainly out of scale but each of those individual little fronds there they will get cut off and group a couple of those together and you've got yourself a nice fern um, other you know interesting ones that will make bushes um, this one was uh, a whole mat of things and if you just sort of yeah come here pull one off you've kind of got a bush there all by itself so I will get on with uh, getting a nice selection of foliage sorted out um, depending on your preference snips craft knife even scissors um, if the kids are going to be doing it just make sure that when you prepare them you see how on that one it's sort of quite a rounded base you probably want it a little bit flatter than that just so that the uh, super glue we're going to be using super glue gets a good chance to stick down so i will get on with this and see you in a second right as you can see lots of foliage cut and the uh, bases have been given an undercoat and a coat of brown didn't bother with the bottom side no point you're not going to see it why do i use brown well I do this uh, basically in any kind of sort of natural ground cover always give it a base coat of brown so that if any flocking rubs off then it just looks like soil underneath now change of plan I had originally going to be using super glue for this but then I thought nah it's let's make it a little bit more kid friendly you don't want them sticking their fingers together so we'll go for our good old backup of hot glue and get one of your bits of foliage ready give it a dab and get it in place and oh that's a nice looking one of course we are going to have to get rid of the the stringy bits but that's all right dab around that back side for support and what else have we got? Ooh, yeah, let's have one of those. And of course, plants don't grow regularly, so you can just go to town, really. Right, <laughs> I'll get on with all the rest of these. Right, where are we up to? So, flock is pretty much dry. A little bit damp, but it will certainly do the job. And we have a whole load of pieces that need flocking on them. So, just make sure that any little straggly bits of glue are taken off. Um, it doesn't matter too much because we are going to be coating this with the flock. And I'm using neat PVA here. Normally I would use it quite watered down, but because PVA does have, or watered PVA does have a, a bit of a problem in sticking to um, hot glue, I'm just going to use it neat. And we just want it in and around all the bases. Certainly covering up that hot glue. And it doesn't have to be regular because at the end of the day nothing in nature is regular. And I'm not taking it all the way out to the edge because I'm going to use green flock grass for that. So get it in. Make sure it all works all the way through and I've got a nice covering 
bit of a tap to get the excess off. Wait a bit more on that side. And then that can be put off to one side to dry. I'll get on with the rest. There you go, all complete. Not bad for an afternoon's gardening if I do say so myself. Nice and flexible. You can obviously use these as spell markers to denote the area of something like an entangled spell. Or add them in with your other terrain to block line of sight and give cover modifiers. Anyway, if you haven't already, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of stuff. Until then, see you next time.